name is Hong Ling Wang, assistant professor from the Department of Computer Science at UVA. Today is my great pleasure to introduce our recent efforts for helping machines to under human sentiment, especially modeling the social norms so that we can understand every individual's opinion precisely. And this is a joint work with my student Lin Gong and Benjamin Hans. And let's get started. Nowadays, as a proliferation of social media, everybody, including you and me, can feel really free to express our opinions online and make our voice heard by all the others. Well, this just provides a huge resource of opinion data for us to tap into, and we can understand our opinion about some kind of political events, social events, especially at a fine granularity. We know everybody's opinion. And then this provides us great resource with more marketing companies can get close to real-time feedback of their marketing campaign effectiveness. And then they can even do personalized ad targeting. So you will see all those sorts of personalized service because of this data become available. But a prerequisite for us to do that is actually like the machine or teach the machine to understand human sentiment, human opinions. And then this, somehow people simply saying, oh, this is a standard machine learning problem because you can simply create a bunch of training data, right? We can ask the experts to annotate tweets, annotate the reviews, and tell the machine this is a positive, this is a negative, learn from it. And then we can do some kind of supervised machine learning, say build a classifier or train a regression model. However, here the underlying assumption is everybody's sentiment is the same, or we express our sentiment in the same way. However, this is largely untrue, right? We all know our sentiment or the way we express our sentiment is so different. We're all, all of us so idiosyncratic. We're just variable, we're just not that similar to each other. So this kind of a generic machine learning cannot really understand every single individual's opinion precisely. So we need some kind of customization. Usually we call it personalization. We hope we can build a personalized classifier or machine learning algorithm for every individual user. And then a trivial solution is, OK, instead of pulling everybody's data together, can we just segment them? Say, twin one classifier for every individual. Technically, we can do that. If we have enough data, we all believe we're living in the air of big data. So we should have enough. But practically, we still encountering or facing the difficulty of so-called small data. Because for every individual user, imagine or think about how many reviews you have written so far. Maybe a hundred or maybe a couple. And then for every individual user, we still encounter the sparsity issue. The data we have for every individual is insufficient to train a useful classifier. Therefore, for this kind of personalized sentiment classification, it seems very difficult, although we know how to do it in a global level. There are some kind of researchers, uh, research has been done that is trying to solve it by introducing domain knowledge, by introducing heuristics. For example, we can leverage the relationship between the users. For example, if we believe they are friends in social network, then they tend to share similar opinions on the same topic. Or we assume users' opinion usually consistent. And then they will talk about the same topic with similar opinions. So this is bring us this kind of semi surprise classifier. However, this kind of solution is just trying to modify the prediction result using those kind of local constraints. Still, we do not have a model for each individual user. While there are some kind of recent effort, for example, in our group, we try, uh, consider this as a transfer learning problem. Because even though we are different, but we are not that different. We are actually modifying something called social norm. And then we follow social norm while we express our individual opinions. However, this kind of a method indeed works to a certain extent. However, for the users who don't have too much data observed, still doesn't work. Think about this kind of uh, how often you will write an opinion or write a review in Amazon. Even though you purchase a lot, but you will not write a review for every single purchase. So we still cannot get a reasonable classifier there for everybody. So we look around, we jump outside the field of machine learning, because outside machine learning, in psychopsychology, uh, in social psychology, actually we have already started this problem, so-called dispositional tendency of humans' uh, opinion in several decades. There we have well-established 
theories about our behavior to explain why we will behave in that way when we are expressing our opinions. For example, from the social comparison theory, is that actually the drive of self-evaluation motivate us to look at the other's opinions, to evaluate how similar we are to them, and therefore we tend to form groups. So once the groups are formed, we try to compare with each other. For example, when you post your opinion on Amazon or Twitter, you not only post, you also read the others. You try to find the confirmation. You try to find the support from the others. This is so-called confirmation bias. And then you tend to filter the things that are kind of inconsistent from your opinion, or you try to argue with them. So once the groups are formed, people try to adopt because of this kind of implicit or explicit interaction or information sharing, try to get rid of this kind of minor difference. So this has captured by this kind of cognitive consistency theory. According to this theory, people will tend to adopt their opinion so that they don't behave like an outlier in the group they believe they belong to. So this kind of consistency actually introduces redundancy. That means it's not every individual user and individual classifier. Actually, we can build classifier at this so-called group level. Once the user join this group, they tend to change their behavior. They try to behave similarly as the users they admire or they respect. So this gives us a basic idea, what if we can identify such groups? based on their past behavior history, and then using this kind of group level social norm or attitude to predict their future behavior, to predict their future sentiment. So that motivates us to study this from this kind of social psychology theory and bring it back to machine learning so that we can build computational methods to make all those social theorems computable. And then we can predict users' behavior and their sentiment. So the key concept here we introduced to bridge these two different areas is so-called latent user group. We believe this latent user group can be characterized by the way the users express their opinions. So we assume even though each individual user can be associated with a different classifier for their sentiment, but they decide to join groups, they decide to kind of adopt existing classifiers inside the group. So they tend to change their opinion because they want to join this group. And instead of assuming one user can only belong to one group, we give them the freedom to join multiple groups or treat it as a distribution. So each user is a mixture over this latent user group. And then in order to really characterize what do we mean by uh, sentiment model here, we simply use a generalized linear model called logistic regression to capture or to map the opinion text content to the real sentiment. But our model is not simply limited to logistic regression or any linear model. It's generally enough. We only need to give reasonable assessment of likelihood because this is a probative model. And then within each group, instead of saying they will learn their social now from scratch, we'll see actually they try to adopt. Because even before you join this group, you have your own way of expressing opinion. You learn it from your common sense or from your experience of interacting with all the people around you. So we believe you will change your opinion, not just totally discard what you, have to, uh, you, what you used to do before, but uh, you are doing some kind of adaptation. Imagine this kind of uh, blue arrow indicates some kind of classification helper plan that represent how you will express your opinion. However, once you join this group, you found this kind of existing social norm can now well explain why people in this group always express opinion in that way. So you try to adapt. You try to make some kind of changes. For example, here we assume you simply tune it by scaling and shifting this helper plan so that you can best satisfy the group norm. And then we further introduce so, uh, other constraints to make it uh, more regularized. We, we assume you will now fine tune each feature individually. You will do them in a group wise manner as well. So you group all the features and then you change them synchronously. And then this gives us advantages that instead of training uh, or estimating those transformation for every single feature, we can estimate for every single feature group. So this greatly reduce the dependency on the data. So we can quickly learn your preferences. And then this gives the highlights of our model to capture this kind of group level 
uh, social norm. It's just like we believe users will join those groups and each group will have their own uh, preferences of expressing the opinions, and these preferences is adopted from a global model. Well, you might ask, where do we got this global model? Global model can come from any common sense. For example, we can manually set a classifier, we can find some kind of previous trained classifier, or we can even just uh, ask some experts to give us. In any sense, this is just treated as a prior, and we can apply the same idea of linear adaptation. We can modify it to best explain what we observed uh, over all the users and then we f further map it into each group. So basically this is a basic idea in our model. It's just like we cluster this linear model adaptations to reflect this group norm and group attitude. You might ask, okay, who gave you this group? And instead of treating those group as deterministic or predefined, we appeal to a modern concept in statistics we call it non-parametric Bayesian. That is, we uh, listen to the data, we ask the data to give us the best group configuration. Basically, we only need to impose some assumptions about the group. For example, we assume they are drawn from the same distribution. And then whenever we need a new group, for example, uh, when a new user join this community, if the user can now join all the existing group, we give them the freedom to create a new group for their own. So data will guide the model, say how many groups are there, uh, how the groups should be formed. To give you a basic intuition, if we simply write out the posterior distribution of the groups, you can see actually we have two components here. The first is a force for the user to join the existing group. Basically, user will look at all the existing groups and then decide whether that's the best model. If not, user have the freedom to create his or her new group. So we just keep repeatedly ask everybody to make a choice and then we will be able to find the grouping for everybody. And then once the model is trained, the we'll, only thing we need to do is to predict for the unseen data what is the opinion, is positive or negative. In order to do so, we have to first identify the user's group. And then we need to know the configuration of this group, for example, how they adapt the global norm into their group norm. And then in order to achieve it, we just developed a posterior sampling algorithm. And I avoid all the technical details here, but I create some kind of animation to help you when, uh, go through the details. So basically, there are two steps. First step is group formation. Given the existing group, we ask everybody, would you like to change your group, or you would like to create a new group? And then we do this for everybody. And then once we got the group assignments, we try to follow the consistent theory to update the model so that the model within the group best explain everybody's opinion. And these two process our steps just keep uh, iterating until convergence is in nobody wants to change, and the model can best explain everybody's opinion. And then once we have it, we know the group assignment, so we can make a prediction basically by voting. We ask the group members to vote what is the opinion of this guy, and then we take an average vote. But here we have to make a very strong assumption. User never change their opinion. Once they join the group, they tend to follow that group norm. We will see later on this become the bottleneck of this model, but also create opportunities for us to further extend. And then in order to evaluate what how this works, whether this kind of uh, social psychology theorem really can be computed and help us to understand individuals' opinion. We collect two large data sets from Amazon and Yap. There we just uh, simply use the state of our text features for some unigram, bigram, computer, TFIDF as our feature because our contribution here is a way to design the model rather than the features. And then we map it to a binary classification problem, and we use the F measure to evaluate the performance of the classification. Basically, we try to balance false positive and false negative in our prediction. So here is a basic statistic of this data set. Here I just want to highlight that even though we have a huge number of reviews, but all those reviews are highly biased. Most of people express their positive opinion there, and very few will express negative opinions. So we need to emphasize both class in the classification. So the first thing we want to prove is whether we can really identify the so-called latent user group or the group now. So here I show you the uh, uh, result during the model training. As you can see, uh, remember we have 10,000 users as a model proceeds the number of user groups we create or we identify keeps decreasing. That's the blue curve here. As you can see, in the end, we end up with something like uh, 80 groups 
on the Amazon data set, while the likelihood keeps increasing. That means we find a better and better group assignment and allocation to explain why users have such diverse opinion. Well, in the same time, the testing performance keeps increasing. That means those models we identified can really predict, can really predict their uh, opinion. And then the next thing is we want to show you what we really learned. So here we say every people is kind of different. Then here we can show you how they use this word to express their opinion in a different way. Here we use word cloud to visualize the diversity of variance of sentiment words. Here the size of each word indicate their variance. The larger that means different people will treat this word differently. Uh, here, maybe you cannot see those small words. That means they are just consistent. For example, on Amazon, people will use terrible, critical, useless consistently. That means they tend to use it as negative words. Well, for the other thing, for example, even though they say recommend, not necessarily mean they really like it or they will give a high rating for this review. So all those are captured by our model. And in the very end, just to show you some kind of quantitative evaluation by comparing with state of our machine learning methods, see how we can do this better than existing. Uh, due to the time limit, let me just uh, go over those numbers very quickly to tell you what is the uh, uh, essential lesson we learned here. First of all, this is our method. We just use it anchor to compare with all the existing methods. As I mentioned, if we simply train one classifier, say everybody will use the same way to express their opinion, their performance is very limited. While if we go to another extreme, say everybody is so different, we train a different model. As you can see, this method basically doesn't work. It just randomly predicts the sentiment because each model is just basically randomly trained because we don't have, we never have sufficient data. Well, our previous solution can indeed improve it. Although everybody will have their own model, we still preserve some kind of uh, utility in prediction, but that's very limited. And this kind of classroom-based method improved a little bit because we somehow pull the data together. From learning perspective, we reduce the sample complexity. Well, comparing with the state-of-the-art method in terms of multitask learning, because of the feature sharing, because of this kind of automatic user grouping, we further outperform all those kind of multitask learning method. So in the last thing we want to share is just like our model right now assume users are stationary. Once they join the group, they tend to stay. However, we found if we allow them to change groups during testing, the performance can be greatly boosted. That means this is a future direction we can further improve this kind of social now modeling. And then to summarize in this work, we make those kind of social uh, social theorems computable. So we uh, those motivate us to build machine learning method not from machine learning field but from the domain knowledge. And then we contribute. Uh, we introduce this idea of latent user group to model this kind of homogeneity of user sentiments. And then we use this joint model learning to identify the user groups while train the learning classifiers. And then we use non-parametric Bayesian to make its model fully data-driven and achieve reasonable performance in practice. So some highlights about the future work. As we mentioned, we want to model the dynamics of sentiment. So we should keep following the user's change so that we can update the model timely. And then right now, we, as we mentioned, we have the so-called feature groups. But the feature groups are somehow are not this one. Here we assume user has to contribute one, at least one label instance in order for us to understand the sentiment of him or her. We want to further relax this and to model the new users in the system. The last thing is, as I mentioned, uh, feature grouping is some, somehow right now manually determined. We want to learn it jointly. And the last thing I just didn't list it here is sentiment analysis should be in a proactive way. That means we can pitch the user say, can you tell me your sentiment rather than wait there passively collecting their data. This will be a new interesting idea uh, to understand the human's uh, sentiment. So that's the references in this talk. We have made everything public available. If you're interested in our work, you can go to our home page and download the code and test it on your uh, problem domains. That's it. Thank you.